Welcome to our first video for our flipped algebra class. In this video, we are going to be discussing verbal and algebraic expressions. For most of you, this should be a review of concepts that you learned in pre-algebra. So first, let's get started by refreshing your memory on what verbal and algebraic expressions are. What do these two terms mean? So a verbal expression is just an expression that's made up of words. It's a way of describing math relations using normal everyday English words. So for example here, we've got the sum of three times a number and six. Okay, we're representing math using an English language sentence. On the other hand, an algebraic expression is made up of math symbols. So if we look down here, this is an algebraic expression. Okay, we've got three x plus six. Now these two terms, or these two expressions, mean the exact same thing. The sum of three times a number in six and three x plus six are identical. They are equal to each other. All right, they are two different ways of writing the same thing. And what we're going to be learning about in this video is how to convert between the two, how to translate from a verbal expression in English to an algebraic expression in math terms. So to start, we're going to take a look at this table. Now this table gives you a list of common words that are used for a bunch of different math express or math ideas. So we're all of these words are words that mean addition, all of these are subtraction, multiplication, division. These are all words for using exponents and these are all words that we can use to represent a variable such as x or n. So what I'd like you to do right now is take a second, pause the video and copy this down into your notes. Okay, now that you're back from writing those down, what I'd like you to do is think about these for a second and think, are these only the only words that we can use to represent all of these different operations? All right, the answer to that question is definitely no. These are not all of the different words we could use. There are a ton of different ones, and we're going to see some of them today and we will definitely discuss more of them in class, but this will give us a good framework, a good basis to start with as we go through how to do our translation. So, we're gonna start by going converting from a verbal expression to an algebraic expression. So, the key in turning a verbal expression into an algebraic expression is finding the math terms in the expression and converting them into algebraic symbols. This is where that table you just made is going to come in very handy. All right, we're going to use a variable for any unknown amounts. Anytime we don't know what a number is, we're going to use a variable to stand in for it. Okay, obviously the most common is X, but also N, M, whatever letters we want can be used. All right, so let's take a look at this. Our example number one, please write this example down in your notes. We're going to go through it. We've got twice a number increased by 75. So let's just start at our first word here, twice. If you look at your table, you'll see that twice is listed under multiplication. And twice is a very specific one, all right? Think about to yourself, what does it mean to do something twice? It means you're going to do it two times. So twice means literally two times something, all right? Now we look at a number. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that's an unknown amount. We don't know what that number is, so we're going to use a variable. Most common variable to use is x. Let's go with it. All right. Moving on, we've got increased by. Looking at your table, you should see increased by is an addition word. All right. If you think when the temperature increases, the temperature is going up, it's getting hotter. Um, when you increase the amount of money in your bank account, you're getting more money. So increased is addition. And then 75, well, 75 is just 75. It's a number. It's already a math term. So looking at this, we have written ourselves an expression. Now, we're doing 2 times a number, x. And when we're doing that, whenever we're doing a number, which we call a coefficient, times a variable, we don't actually have to write this multiplication symbol. We can just put them next to each other, 2x. Whenever you see a number and a variable next to each other, that's multiplication. So 2x is 2 times x. Bring down our plus sign for addition, 
and our 75. So now we've got 2x plus 75 and twice the number increased by 75. These two mean the exact same thing. We've now gone from a verbal expression to an algebraic expression. So let's look at another example. So this is example two. Write this one down in your notes as well. Now this one's a bit more complicated. We've got the sum of 20 in a number less than eight times a different number. All right, so this one has a lot of math in it, but we're just gonna go through it word by word and we're gonna pick out the math we see. So going through, we're gonna see sum. We know that is an addition word. 20 is you know, just 20. And a number, we know we're gonna use a variable. I'm not going to use X this time. I'm just gonna use an H. Just picking a random letter to use. Less than. Less than we know is a subtraction word. We're gonna come back and talk about this in a second because less than is a very specific case that we gotta make sure you know how to do it correctly. Eight is just eight. Times we know is multiplication and a different number. Now, we don't know what this number is, so once again, we're talking about a variable, and because we don't know, because it says the word different here, we can't use H, all right? We have to pick something else, so I'm gonna use M. All right, so now we have all this stuff. So, what we need to talk about now is less than. Now, something very specific and something kind of weird happens when we use less than. What happens is, if we take less than and we look at what's on either side of it, they're going to switch sides, all right? So anything that's to the left of the less goes over to the right. Anything that's the right to the right of the than goes to the left. So I'm gonna start by writing down what's on this side. I've got eight times M. So I'm gonna write that eight M. Then I put my subtraction symbol and now I have the sum of 20 and a number. Well, that is 20 plus h. Now, we gotta think about this for a second because we're not quite done. The less than switches them, okay? So whenever we see less than, whatever's on the right goes to the left, whatever's on the left goes to the right. But we gotta think here really quickly. I've got 8m minus 20 plus h. If we think order of operations, what are we gonna do? Eight times whatever M is minus 20. But we're not subtracting 20 from eight M, we're subtracting this whole thing, 20 plus H. So before we do our subtraction, we want to do this addition. How do we make that happen? Well, if we think back to order of operations, all we have to do is stick some grouping symbols, in this case parentheses, right around there. So now, I'm gonna do this 20 plus H, and then, I'm gonna subtract all of that, whatever it is, from my 8m. So this expression here, 8m minus the sum of 20 plus h, is the same thing as the sum of 20 in a number less than eight times a different number. So once again, we've gone through, and we have taken our verbal expression and made it an algebraic expression. So, here we go, I've got, another try I've got a try it problem for you to do. What I'd like you to do, pause the video, write this problem down, and work it out. I am not going to be giving you the answer to this problem today. We will, I want you to bring it to class tomorrow and we will discuss it in class. So go ahead, pause the video. Once you've got this one done, start the video back up so that we can move on. All right, now that you're back, we are going to be talking about going the other way. We're going to be talking about converting from algebraic expressions to verbal expressions. So how are we going to do this? Well, to convert from an algebraic expression to a verbal expression, all we're going to do is simply write out whatever operations you see. If you look in this example number three down here, we can see the math operations happening. We just need to plug in words. What we're going to try to do is, we're going to try and use words other than plus, minus, times, divided by, we're trying to avoid the basic, basic ones. Now, those are perfectly valid, perfectly good ways of doing them, but now that we're in algebra, we wanna try and use a little bit higher level vocabulary words. And also the SOL is going to be using those high level vocabulary words, so you really wanna know how to do it. So let's look at what's happening here. 
we've got this number, 17. It's next to a variable. And remember, even though we don't write it, there's some multiplication going on here. So right away, we know we've got 17, we've got some multiplication, we've got an exponent here, okay? So we're going to have to write that in. This is x, we say this is x to the fifth power, or x, we know we can say a number to the fifth power. We've got some subtraction going on here, and then we've got 22. So the most basic, basic, basic way of writing this is simply 17 times a number to the fifth power. So we've got 17 times a number to the fifth power minus 22. And that's the most basic way of writing it. Like I said, we want to try and avoid those a little. So let's look at a slightly higher level way of doing it. Okay? Another way of saying subtraction is difference. So we're saying the difference of, now we're going to put whatever is on the right of the subtraction symbol. All right? A way of writing multiplication is product. So the product of 17 and a number raised to the fifth. That's a way of writing x to the fifth power, a number raised to the fifth. And then and 22. So it's the difference of this. 17x to the fifth, which is the product of 17 and number raised to the fifth, and 22, which is just 22. This is another way of writing it. It's a slightly longer, a little more awkward way of writing it, but it's a little more in-depth. And then a third way we could write this is, remember, whenever we use this less than, whenever we use less than, we are changing places. So I can say, okay, I'm going to use less than. 22 goes to the left. 17x to the fifth goes to the right, and I could say that's 22 less than x to the fifth power multiplied by 17. It doesn't matter that 17 comes first. It's still being multiplied by x to the fifth power, so I can write it in this way. So this is a third way of writing this. There are literally hundreds of different ways we could write this. I just wanted to give you three. You can probably come up with more of your own. All four of these expressions, this algebraic one, and these three verbal expressions all mean the exact same thing. So let's look at one more example of converting from an algebraic expression to a verbal expression. This is example number four. So we're going to look at this. So this one's a little different. We've got some stuff in parentheses here. We're going to try and find a way of writing this down. So let's just go through and see what we've got. We've got the number eight. We see we've got some division. And then we've got in parentheses here, one plus nine times v. Now, we want to write our expression in such a way that we're showing that we want to do this 1 plus 9v before we do the division. All right? So here's a way that we could write that. We could say we've got 8 divided by the sum of 1 and 9 times a number. Now, by putting this sum here first, we're saying that 8 is not being divided by 1, 8 is not being divided by 9v, it's being divided by this whole thing. So, by putting the sum here, we're showing that. So we say 8 divided by the sum of 1 and 9 times a number. All right, we can find another way of doing this. Another way of doing it looks like this. The quotient, quotient being the answer to a division problem, of 8 and the quantity. Okay, quantity just tells us that that's the answer to whatever's inside this parentheses. The quantity of 1 increased by 9v, all right? Increased being adding. So both of these mean the exact same thing as this expression. Once again, there are a whole ton of different ways of writing this. These are just three different ways that you can do it. So I'm going to leave you with a second try it problem. So what you need to do is write this problem down in your notes, work it out, and we'll discuss it in class tomorrow. When you're done with the try it problem, you need to go down to the bottom part of your notes, write up a summary of what's happened in the video today, and bring all of your notes and the try it problems to class tomorrow.